Hello everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna talk about interface and what that is and how do we use it. So, let's go! Don't forget this channel has a dedicated Discord server. It's a place where you can talk about the episodes and tutorials of this channel. Maybe you wonder something about the last episode that was a bit unclear. Or maybe you just wanna say hello. And for those who wish to go the extra mile to support the channel, there's a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page, and also there's a membership option here on YouTube. Thank you! What is an interface? An interface may look similar to a class, but there are a few key differences and also the use case. The interface is, just like a class, a separate file. And this interface contains methods or static final fields. Meaning, when you create an integer in this interface, the value you give it is the value that it will always have. It will be a constant value. You cannot change it. That is what the final modifier means. There's been a few different changes and additions to the interface in the last few Java versions. But we will start with just making a very simple interface. So let's go to our code here and right click our land here, new interface. It's right below the class here. And we're going to call this one heat pump. So it will be a interface for a heat pump. And the idea behind this interface is that whenever a class implement this interface, they can now use the heat pump code, if you will. So think of it as we're adding heat pump to a class, whatever it might be. And we can see right away that it says public interface heat pump and not public class heat pump. So the keyword here is interface. And the way we add methods in here is that we simply declare them. So void uh, st start heat pump, a method for starting the heat pump. And then we need a method for stop heat pump. And unlike any other class, let's take the building one and drag it to the left here, where we have public void, then we have the name of the method, and then we have the code for that method. In the interface, all we do is declare the type of method and whatever code we're going to add in here will be added in the class that implements this heat pump. And we can also add a int here for power usage per hour set to 2000 watt. So this heat pump is using 2000 watt per hour doesn't really matter too much. We just want to uh, add a integer here to demonstrate its use case. So what can we do with this heat pump? Well, we can take our house actually, and we can take this interface and add it to our house class. And the way we do that is by going after we have extended something, we can also implement something. And this one is called heat pump is the interface and you always implement after you extend if you extend something we don't have to extend something just to implement something but if you do extend something the implementation comes after and as you can see now we have an error here and it says that we must implement the abstract methods so add unimplemented methods and here are those two methods we declare them as void so they will be void here as well if they were int, then we would need to change them into a int and then, of course, return something. But they are void, so we're going to keep them as void for now. And now, with those methods implemented, we can start coding inside those methods. So for the start heat pump, we just want to say that uh, heat pump started. And we're going to keep it very simple and say that heat pump stopped. So if we go to our main class here and just remove all of that, we can now use house.start heat pump. And then we can say house.stop heat pump. And if we run it now, Take a look at our console. It says heat pump started and then we stopped it. And if we want to access this power usage per hour, this integer is a public static final. So it's accessed everywhere 
and it's also static meaning we don't need to create a object like we do here house house equals new house so if we want to access that integer we say int a equals heat pump dot power usage per hour so we access it just like any other type of class with a static variable and because it's a final we cannot say heat pump dot power usage per hour equals four we cannot change it because that is a final field meaning that it can never be changed so we assign it and set the value in the interface and then we can use it but we can never change it from anywhere else if we want to change it we have to do it hard coded in our interface what's the use case for this then why don't we just skip the interface thingy and add the methods and fields inside the class that we're going to use it in instead if we go to our house class here and sure we could add these two methods in just like we've done before and also this integer like we've done before but inside our interface we can code out everything once and then we can implement this interface in other classes as well for example the apartment so apartment let's bring him to the left here extends building and then implements heat pump and now we need to import those methods as well and then we can go to house and we can copy paste here start heat pump and then stop the heat pump and stop the heat pump so that way we can make sure that every class that implements the heat pump also gets to have these methods. They will always have these methods because they are in the interface. And if we add something else, uh, check status, something like that, and we save it. Now we need to add those new methods in every class that is implementing this interface. But that sounds like something we can just do in the super class. So we can add those methods here. We don't have to add them in either house or apartment because they are already in the super class. So we can already access them. That sounds like something we can do instead. But, but that's, not, that's not really the use case for interface because here we're simply declaring the methods, not the code inside of them. And every class that implements the heat pump may need to have slightly different code inside each method. So for example, inside our house class here, we can say that heat pump started because it's snowing. So it's only starting because it's snowing, but in the apartment heat pump started because it's raining. I don't know, just some, some different code in each class. And then in our first lesson class here, we can add a apartment app equals new apartment. And then right after house there, we say app dot start heat pump, app dot stop heat pump. And we run it and we bring this one up. So started because it's snowing, then it stopped. Then we started because it's raining and then we stopped. So even though they have implemented the same methods, the methods themselves have slightly different code inside of them. And that's kind of the key point here, why we add a interface that they will have very similar methods or the same method, but the code inside each method is going to be different or slightly different, much different, who knows. And if we change anything inside this interface, add a new method or remove a method, that change needs to be applied to all classes that implements this interface. Meaning that we make sure that every class that is implementing the heat pump, we also make sure that they are adding those methods that is needed for it to work properly. I mentioned at the beginning that there were changes that have been happening to Java interfaces and we're gonna cover two things that were added in Java 8 and that is default methods and also static so in here we can add default void and we can call show cost 
And here we are actually going to add a code bracket. And we save this now and we got no errors because it's not a abstract method, meaning that we don't need to override it to use it. So in here we can say, well, SUSU, it cost $100 per hour or something like that, but just to get an idea how it works. So if we go to our first lesson here and after house stop heat pump, we can say house dot show cost. And if we run it now, it costs hundred dollars per hour. All right. So you can have methods in here that is going to work just like they were in a super class, for example. That is one of the things that got added in Java 8, default methods. And another thing that got added is static methods. Just like we have an integer here that we can access without implementing this heat pump, we can also add a method that we can access without implementing the heat pump. So static void show version. So the version of this uh, heat pump. Siso this is version one. And the way to access that is simply by calling heatpump.show version. And if we run it now, we should have that in our console. This is version one. So yeah, that works too. Those are two things that were added or changed to our interface in Java 8. And two other changes that have been added to interfaces in recent years are private methods and also private static methods. So let's add a private uh, method here, private void parts. Let's just call it parts. And it will be a very simple method that's going to say all parts are here. And of course, we had a private static void greetings, we're going to call it. And this greeting will just take a similar approach and say, hello, I am a interface. So how do we call a private static method and how do we call the private method inside an interface? Because just like another class, private methods are only accessible to the class it's contained inside. So for our private method parts, we're going to call that from our uh, default here. So here we can say parts. And this private static method, we cannot call like any other static methods because it's private. So we need to call it from a static method itself. So we're going to call greetings from show version. And now if we run this, we should have some more text in our console. All right. So we said hello when we created the apartment, I think. Let's see. Yeah. Hello message is in the apartment. So that's where that comes from. And then we started the heat pump and stopped the heat pump for the house. And we also said house.show cost. So it cost $100, $100 per hour. Yes, right there. And this default method is calling parts because it's a private method and only this class can or this interface can access or call these private methods in here. So the default method calls the private method and we should see all parts are here. All parts are here. Absolutely. And then we go down. Show version is a static method. So we don't have to create a object out of this interface to access it. We can just say interface dot static method. And we do that by saying heat pump dot show version. So we should have this is version one. This is version one. And in this, we also have the greetings and greetings was hello, I'm an interface. Hello, I am an interface. So everything is working as intended. And of course, there are more things that you can do with interfaces. For example, an interface can also extend on the interface, but there's no limit here. You can extend more than one interface. 
you can also put an interface inside another interface, so called a nested interface. Now, the use case for this is beyond me. Maybe someone in the comments want to explain why this is needed over some other solution. So I'm not going to show it, it's more advanced stuff. But one thing I will show and say is that our building, no, our house, that it's that is implementing this heat pump can keep adding more interfaces. So our land here, new interface, I don't know, um, housekeeper. Let's say we're gonna add a housekeeper to this uh, house. Uh, I'm not gonna add any methods in here, but house can now extend also a housekeeper. And the way we add more interfaces is just by, first we use implements, interface and then comma next interface comma next interface and so on so a class can only extend one class but it can implement many interfaces and before the end of this episode let's take a look at what i used interface for last when i used it in the real world so to speak and i have this platformer tutorial we can go to or i can go to uh, game states and here we have something called the state class, which is a super class, just like our building is super class for all our buildings. This state class is the super class for all different type of game states, such as playing menu options, credits, and so on. So a different class for different game states. So for example, we had our playing here, playing state extends the state but it also implements state methods. And in here we have a couple of methods, but all of these methods are going to be different in each class that implements them. So they cannot be in the super class. So the update method in every different type of game state is gonna have different code because it's different things to update, but it needs a update method, for example and also for its drawing and also its mouse inputs. It's going to be different, but they all will need to have these methods. So that's why a interface comes in very handy. So yeah, I wanna say thank you guys for watching. I hope that you learned something. And if you did, hit that like button and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next episode as well. Take care now, bye.